The Aliens and Predator toy line was one of my favorites growing up. Sure, I was 10 to 12 years old, but I still love toys. Come to think of it, I don't think my brother and I ever stopped loving toys, just forced out of them. Well, that's thanks to society. And girls. Girls was a big one. Anyway, after all these years, I finally got more than one of each figure. I was going to do this whole thing where I talked about each line as a whole, but what the heck. Growing up, the Scorpion Alien and the Spike Tail Predator were my Alien and Predator figures of choice. The Scorpion Alien was the only one that looked like a normal alien and that's really all I wanted, except my parents felt that the 2-pack was too expensive. So I made do with the Scorpion. As for the Spike Tail Predator, I think part of his charm was his Cyclops style helmet and his color scheme of dark brown, gold, and bronze. I like bronze. And I love this stuff. And I also want to talk about them individually. There's some interesting stuff here, even though some of the figures are recolored. Now, here's an introduction to Kenner's Alien and Predator toy lines. I remember the kids talking about Alien vs Predator in the early 90s. At the time, the movie wasn't a thing yet. That movie wouldn't come out for another 10 years. In 1990, Konami released Aliens on Arcade. This was a beat em up style game, but you were actually shooting these aliens. You got to play as Ripley or Corporal Hicks. All the aliens were basically warrior aliens, and the bosses were different types of aliens that we've never seen before, not even in the toy line. A year later, Dark Horse released the comic book, Alien vs Predator. And in 1992, Kenner gave us the Aliens toy line. Two years later, Kenner would finally release the Predator toys. That same year, Konami released the Aliens vs Predator beat em up arcade game, which is one of my favorites of all time, and kinda hard to find. Alien vs Predator by Konami is a two player beat em up where you play as one of two predators and or one of two humans. The two predators are the Hunter and Warrior Predators. They both look exactly like the Kenner Renegade Predator, which came out in a solo pack or in a two-pack with a warrior alien. The two human characters don't resemble anyone in the Aliens or Predator toy lines. When the Aliens toy line came out, it was Aliens and Humans. Some of these figures came with a comic book and some would come with a face hugger. When the Predator toy line came out, it was exactly what we expected. Predators with weapons. The aliens gave us four vehicles, a carrying case, and a playset. The Predators only gave us one vehicle. All these figures would come with some sort of gimmick. Pull the figure's waist and let go a la Masters of the Universe, and he throws deadly discs. Push a button on the alien and watch him explode. Squeeze the alien's head and watch him spit acid. And then some of the gimmicks were just the color schemes that they chose. The cards for these figures feature some pretty cool artwork. The front of these carded figures would feature a large head of a standard xenomorph for the alien toys. Now that would be both aliens and humans. The human xenomorph got green drool while the aliens got red drool. The Predators got a renegade Predator since he's the most generic of the Predators. Alongside with these heads, there was also some great original artwork of the toy that you were getting. 
The bubble for the aliens was in the shape of an egg, while the humans and predators got a standard squared bubble. The card backs on these figures went from excellent to good to just plain being lazy. The original Aliens card back gave us an amazing environmental photo of all the figures that were out at the time. It's a diorama that has excellent dramatic lighting and smoke. You can see these figures clear as day and I don't know about you but even with two Ripley's in the photo it makes me really want these badly. This photo should be a blueprint on how to take photos of toys and how to make card backs. The photo is so well done I'd love to have it blown up to poster size and framed. The second Aliens card bag showed us a lineup of all the Aliens, Space Marines, and vehicles in that classic collect them all kind of way. I like this since it doesn't have me guessing on what's out and what's not. The third card bag continued the look of the previous card and added three Predators. The Crack Tusk Predator, Scavenge Predator, and the Aliens vs Predator 2 pack which included the regular No Frills Warrior Alien and the Renegade Predator. I must add that during this time we seem to have lost the Ripley figure, which is really sad because I really love her figure and she's one of the best women head sculpts of the 1990s. Later the card liked any Space Marines and it would seem that they were focusing more on Aliens vs Predator by this time even though that wasn't on the title. As with a lot of toys in the 1990s, they added a story for flavor. These toy lines had three all together and they were scattered throughout the toy line's lifetime. Dark, empty, silent. This is deep space and vicious aliens are attacking. One force has the guns and the guts to face these ugly monsters. Send in the heavy metal. Send in the Space Marines. The invasion is on. The Predators have seeded a planet with alien eggs. The hatchlings infest all living creatures on the planet to spawn new breeds of gruesome aliens. With this well-stocked hunting ground of ghastly aliens, the Predators are ready to stalk the ultimate big game. Who will win? The stage is set for the ultimate battle between the universe's two most ferocious enemies. It's the gruesome and evil aliens against the big game hunting predator. Who will win? The beast or the hunter? Can the predator stop the evil aliens before the galaxy is destroyed? I love the one where they talked about the predator seeding a planet to create big game hunting for themselves. I wonder if they would call it Rancho Predatoros, or something like that. But seriously, that story is pretty frightening, especially for a toy line. 1996 was the last year for Kenner's Aliens and Predator toy lines. We were getting the same Aliens and Predators released in different uninspired color schemes. The Alien figures would lose their mini comics and face huggers. And Predators, well we wouldn't get any cool variants like glow in the dark or clear. Although we did get something I have always wondered as a kid. If there's a queen alien, where's the king alien? The king alien came to us at the end of the line alongside the swarm alien and laser shot predator. The king alien was available through the Aliens vs Space Marines 2 pack and as a solo pack. The laser shot predator and the swarm alien both came in solo packs and they were both electronic. Since this was the end of the line, both toy lines went bare bones on us and they dropped the shape bubbles for a more vacuum seal look. We also lost the original artworks of the toys. That was really disappointing. The final card backs were very lazily done and they don't really show you what was out at the time. Instead, we get the instructions on how to use the figure. Did I say figure? I meant all the figures. On the previous card backs, we had the lineup, and below the lineup, there was instructions on how to use that figure. They basically cut those parts out and put them all into one. This toy line is very interesting because it started off as one line that somewhat merged with another one. 
Everyone called it Alien vs Predator, but in reality there was only one 2-pack that held that title. The rest were either Alien figures or Predator figures. Now that we have a little bit of knowledge in our back pockets, we'll be looking at the Scorpion Alien next time.